Hi everyone in cloud computing and welcome to episode 36 of the Cloud Computing Training Show with Brad Nelson, an internationally recognized and world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show, we are excited to have as our special guest, Amit Zavery. Amit is the Executive Vice President of Product Development, Oracle Cloud Platform, Middleware and Java, and a member of Oracle's executive team. He was instrumental in building Oracle's Fusion Middleware product portfolio that scaled from zero to five billion US dollars in annual revenue in less than 10 years, and is now leading Oracle's transformation into a cloud platform provider by starting and building Oracle's public cloud. Hi Amit, a warm welcome to you. It's great to have you on the training show this week. Uh, hello, thanks for having me. And Dave, again, a warm welcome to you, sir. It's great to have you on the training show. It's great to be here. It's great to have Moon on. Absolutely. In this week's show, we'll be talking about that in the past, a lot of technology was developed outside of the healthcare and then applied in healthcare setting. However, is artificial intelligence now driving the new medical frontier for physician training? We've got a great opening question for you, Dave. Will doctors soon be data analytics drivers with machine learning making many of the calls around patient care? Yeah, I certainly hope so. <laughs> I would like nothing more than a than a, a new surgeon who's uh, cut me open, who's about to cut an artery that's the wrong artery, to have something come up in an augmented reality screen that has a big circle and a slash through it, uh, so they don't kill me. Um, so you know, a lot of people die within hospitals um, because of uh, mistakes, and and we we just don't realize it. You know, and misdiagnostics. Um, the um, miss uh, giving people the wrong drugs, the wrong treatments, things like that. And I'm not saying replace doctors. And I just wrote a column about this in uh, InfoWorld this week. I'm not saying do, do that, but I do think we have to put some research and development into training programs and augmented reality and really kind of leveraging the technology for the purpose which is going to be leveraged. And I don't mind a machine learning based system double checking. Um, the diagnostics that I'm getting. And in fact, you know, in the future, I see many of my diagnostics being self-diagnosed, you know, via the devices we wear and, and submitting data myself and things like that, not necessarily getting to a treatment. I hope like, we can't prescribe ourselves drugs and treatments and things like that, but getting information to someone who can make a call based on somebody else making a triage call. I don't think doctors should be bothered by everybody who, you know, has some kind of complaint um, unless it's diagnosed as something, it needs to be taken to the next level. And I think we're trying to control healthcare costs, things like that. And we haven't done a good job in automating these things and leveraging machine learning to, in essence, place ourselves or place a layer of intelligence between us and the physicians and the clinicians who are providing care. And we need to get a lot better, of it, better with it going forward. And as far as the training aspect of it, Let's go ahead and leverage this technology to train the surgeons and train the doctors and people who are making decisions. And let's watch the decisions that is being made and let's teach them from the ground up the day, day when they're in medical school to work and play well with these systems, you know, versus bucking the systems, which I see a lot of doctors doing these days. We're, we just got to get a new generation of people in there trained to understand how to leverage these machine learning based systems, these big data systems. It's just going to mean more care. It's going to mean healthier people. And it's going to be more proactive uh, healthcare going forward and actually cheaper healthcare, more effective healthcare. So let's get with it. And I'd love to get your opinion on this. No, no, I think you put it very well. I think in general, having intelligence to help doctors do their job better uh, definitely makes perfect sense. Right? I mean, why would you not want any kind of intelligence available to them so that they, when they're doing this very painful as well as very life critical kind of work, uh, anything we can aid them with. Uh, to make sure they're making the right call, I think is perfect thing to do. And I think with now, as you said, with machine learning and the information you collect, there's a lot of valuable uh, information which can be shared with the physicians and the surgeons about your health or about things which worked, which didn't work, and it allows them to really uh, get a better idea of who you are and what needs to be happening. So it completely, I think the systems needs to start incorporating a lot of this uh, kind of capabilities. Uh, so that we can sa save lives and make people healthier. I mean, that's way exactly the great goal you can have from a system like this. So I think a lot of these machine learning based systems, they, they rely on, as you, as you put in a previous show, on data. And so in other words, they need information to kind of get smart about stuff and make decisions. You know, how do we go about 
you know, creating laws and regulations that are favorable to gathering this information. People have a tendency to freak out when information is being gathered, even if it's anonymized. I think they're worried about abuse. But if we don't have the information, we can't make these decisions. Um, so and hospitals have a tendency to kind of silo their information because they don't want to get mortality rates out there, things like that. Things will give them bad press. Um, how do we work as an industry, in this case, the healthcare industry, to ensure that we're collecting information with the utmost privacy is protected? Obviously, the regulators are going to have to get involved. This is going to become where it becomes complex and kind of dysfunctional as technologists. Well, what's your feelings on this? No, no, I think uh, there has been a lot of regulation been pulled, put into uh, the healthcare industry for many years now. And I think we had a point where many, at least uh, individuals, feel that the data about their about the health and the records about that are well protected. You rarely see too much of uh, issues around uh, personal information being provided from healthcare companies to other people when it's not allowed. So I think the systems you're building today, uh, uh, all the vendors are very supportive of a lot of the regulation to make sure that you are encrypting the data. There is a lot of regulation from in terms of who can see it. But people who are authorized to see it should be able to use it in a much better way. I think there's a lot of things which have still not been done today where the information to a physician is they have a lot of access to information about you, but that uh, that information is not even used properly to really make you healthier. So even if you can start using that as a starting point, I think there's a lot of value to be had. Today, still a lot of the records they have is this information, which is like a list of data which they can go through and scan it, but they don't give you anything beyond that. How do you mine and use that even for individual uh, cases is, I think, a leap forward from where we are. But as you said, I think the industry needs to really think about the regulations. They need to think about how do you still save lives while not jeopardizing privacy. And I think that's really what uh, the vendors like Oracle, healthcare companies who are kind of providing and running the hospitals uh, and, and individuals, uh, I think the government regulations needs to all come together. And I think it takes some time, but I think we're moving in the proper direction at least. I don't feel that that's hindering us from progressing anymore. So what about training? We're talking about augmented reality, virtual reality, links to machine learning, things like that. Yeah. You know, how do we uh, you know, think about um, training physicians on utiliz utilizing this technology early on in the career? It seems like we're having to retrofit a lot of this advanced technology and it's, it's not necessarily getting into the cultures of the clinicians and people who are delivering care. Um, so do we do this in a centralized approach? The medical schools need to be educated. Do the uh, and I always I always thought this was going to be the, um, the the ultimate solution. We're going to have to get the um, um, the technologists really kind of sitting with the medical uh, with the medical folks to teach them how to leverage technology properly, and vice versa, and get the me medical folks to teach the technologists how to understand how the processes work in their in their side of the house. And so we can get this kind of synergy of things. So do you think that's gonna be a, a larger growth area going forward, machine learning, VR, augmented reality? No, I think so. I think the, the applications will change. Uh, and I think the onus is on the vendors like Oracle to really make sure those applications we are building and delivering to healthcare professionals are still able to be used without having to become a technologist. As, an, as a physician. If you try to say, you know, the way as a physician you work or operate, that's a very hard thing to do. Uh, people, they have enough things to learn themselves today when they go to medical schools or uh, dental schools. They really need to make sure that they're learning, that they're learning about how to operate and work on you as, a, as, 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 as patients. And having to now give them tools which is easy to incorporate in a day-to-day -day with the way they work, I think is a more important thing to do. So this VR, for example, in the apps they might be using, or information they might be getting, how do you take the existing applications and make them VR enabled versus saying that, you know what, you switch over completely to brand new systems, which is a long process for many of these hospitals and, uh, and physicians. And we really need to make sure that they are not getting a burden of the technology and they don't really start freaking out. So ultimately, is this less about memorization and more about technique and understanding how processes work and understanding uh, where to get the information from and diagnostic of systems. Seems like a lot of what physicians learn is memorizing things, memorizing right. chemicals, interactions, drugs, you know, things like that. So this is less about memorization, more about actually applying the skills and more about understanding where to get the information. So it's a little bit different kind of a training that needs to be involved. Would you agree? Well, that's true, yes. I think that definitely in terms of how they, what they focus on versus having to now depend completely on their memory 
to do everything. That I think is going to change because now they'll have information at the tip of the fingertips uh, versus having to now go and not, not be able to find anything and then you have to really depend on your memory or things the way you learned before. So how do you make information they need available to them in the time they need it uh, quickly and easily? I think it's definitely going to be a big differentiation. So yeah, I agree with that. So last question, I mean, do you think this is going to be internationally centralized going forward? We're, we're doing things typically at the national level in terms of you know, building uh, outcome-based systems and machine learning-based systems, but it seems like it should incorporate um, third world countries, first world countries, you know, all uh, Australia, China, Japan, to really kind of get the larger swath of folks and also be able to treat people better. Do you think we'll ever get to the point where we'll share data across borders? I think maybe I think anytime there's a regulation or government entity involved, it makes it very tricky. I think the technology will be available globally uh, in terms of how you use it and how you kind of incorporate that into your day-to-day -day work as in the healthcare industry might be a little more specific to a particular country. I think the data sharing across countries might be always tricky, but the learnings from the data or the learnings from what uh, you did in one country does apply to many other countries. And that is where I think international vendors and uh, healthcare uh, industry veterans and all will make a difference in terms of making that happen. Great, thanks. Back to you, Brad. Thanks, Dave. You've got some great questions there. I've thoroughly enjoyed listening to you guys going backwards and forwards. And, you know, I feel that we've got some, you know, covered some great ground. Look, you know, I, I've got a, a question for you, Annie, actually, around where Oracle's positioned at the moment in the, the healthcare tech market, obviously with you know a platform as a service uh, provider. But looking, looking at what's already been demonstrated in the UK recently, uh, there was a test done for general practitioners uh, where usually only 72% are, uh, are achieving a, a relatively good score at 72%, sorry, whereas artificial intelligence came in and, and produced 81%. So, and that was on a first attempt as well. So, I mean, my question really is, how do you see Oracle as a, a training provider within an artificial intelligence healthcare environment going forward? I think a couple of things. One, uh, we as, as a cloud provider, we will have systems running in many countries, right? So today we have 29 data centers and we're adding another 10 this year uh, globally, right? So the information will be now available very specifically in each and every key country where there might be regulations. Uh, so that you can still pro provide the information by the regulatory requirements in that particular country. So now the healthcare, where we're going to provide a service, we have applications which are running in the cloud services, and that can help train as well as enable a lot of the uh, physicians and doctors and healthcare providers. Similarly, I think when you add on top of that AI technologies we're building, uh, we are incorporating that into those cloud services. And our applications are built on a lot of the machine learning models and frameworks so that that information is much more easily usable and providing a lot more insights. So that's what I expect our goal has been. And I think we are participating in pretty much every key industry healthcare initiative. Uh, and uh, we continue to kind of uh, making sure we make the progress required for the things we're learning from. That's great. Thanks, Emmett. And, and look, thank you again for being part of the three shows this week. I really appreciate that. Sure. Yeah. Thanks for having me. No, you've been great. You really have been great. And again, appreciate you giving up your uh, part of your Sunday evening as well uh, on the on the West Coast. So thank you for that. And and Dave, you know, thanks again for being uh, part of the uh, training show this week. It's always a pleasure, man. Great having Emmett. Yeah, it really has been great having Amit. And look, thanks for watching, everyone. We really do hope you enjoyed watching this week's training show. If you're just tuning into the training show, then make sure you check out the Australia show, uh, where we cover things in Australia and the global uh, AI market as well with Amit, which was awesome. Uh, and we also had a great C-suite show as well. So, you know, there have been three really great shows this week, so uh, we hope you enjoyed them. Uh, you know, feel free to uh, comment uh, in the description box below, uh, like the video, share it with your friends and colleagues. David's on Twitter, Amit's on Twitter, I'm on Twitter. All of that will be in the description box below as well. So thanks again for watching and until next week.